As we've established, Singapore is currently vibrant, convenient and westernised. But before we take a closer look at potential properties to invest in, let's see how the commercial real estate market is doing here. I'm here with Trisha Tio, who's going to talk to me about industrial and commercial property. Everyone here is talking about residential. Is there value still in commercial? Yes, there is. There is still values in commercial. In fact, a lot of people do not know that uh, in industrial and commercial properties, the rental yield is very much higher than residential yield. Okay. Yeah, because basically a lot of people, their knowledge is in residential. Uh, they do not know what is the use for industrial. So a lot of people dare not invest. Yeah. Yeah. But so industrial and commercial yields higher. Tell me, commercial yield roughly, what do I get? Okay, uh, basically uh, industrial and commercial yields are looking at uh, minimum 8% and above. Wow. Yeah. For both or which is better? Uh, industrial is better. Okay. okay. The reason why I say industrial is better because the quantum is small. Yeah. Yeah, because there are strata units whereby the quantum is very small. What about any restrictions on foreigners? No, nope, no restriction on foreigners. Okay. It's just that the only the only thing is for industrial and commercial property you have to pay GST. Okay. What's yeah. it, how much is GST? Seven percent right now. Oh. Yes. So. A little bit taxy. Seven percent GST. Correct. But the thing is, if you are always uh, investing, there are a lot of investors they actually incorporate a company. Okay. Yeah. So it's cheaper to do it that way. Yes. Okay. Finally, on the commercial side, because some people don't like buying industrial. They, Yield or not, they kind of see it as a non-sexy asset. So, on the commercial side, you know, where can we buy at a reasonable cost of getting in? Lots of people watching this, you know, aren't going to be spending millions of dollars. They're going to be spending spending thousands of dollars. So, mm. any, any advice to us on where we can get cheap commercial with good yields? Those with high yields would be those with uh, good, let's say, if it's shops, would be good. Uh, those with good front page, yeah. if it's offices, would be those near to MRT station. Back in 2004, I bought an apartment in the Icon building, very close to Singapore's business district. Welcome to Tim's place in Singapore. My brief to the agent was prime, but not super prime. And I also said I wanted a two bedroom unit. But what really sold me on this place was the fact that it's a loft apartment, which is very rare in Singapore. So I'm gonna show you what I mean by loft apartment. Now, I'm not one to gloat, but I paid about 900,000 Sing dollars for this place. It's probably worth 1.8, 1.9 million now, so I'm absolutely delighted. What I love about these apartments, though, and Singapore developers is the quality is fantastic. It's about four years since they completed this, and OK, I probably need to paint the walls a little bit, but the quality is absolutely wonderful. Lovely high ceilings, as you can see, and I just, I'm really, really proud of this place. When I bought this, there are very few duplex apartments on the market. I think people instinctively like to come upstairs to bed. I'm getting about $6,000 a month on this, so the yield is about 3.5%. It's only costing me 0.95% in mortgage interest payments, so it's not a bad deal. The only downside of this place is a bloke who's renting it off me supports West Ham. Now it's time to look at some more property in this vibrant city. I'm looking for convenience, comfort and good value as a potential second investment. Fortunately, Singapore seems to have all of that. Thanks, Andy. So what size is this? This would be a 1066 square feet. It's a two-bedroom with a study. OK. Right. And give me one compelling reason why I should buy this unit. Um, a few reasons, actually. Uh, one would be the proximity to the MRT, which is the public transport. Yeah. Uh, two would be the unblocked city view, which you can okay. see from here. And also the quietness of this area is very, very quiet. You okay. don't feel like you're... So you're there must be a downside. There's always a downside. So, you know, what's stopping people buying this? The one downside that I can see is actually the hospital. Uh, some buyers are fearful of um, the possibility of another pandemic or something like SARS coming along. So okay. it might have some impact on the pricing here. Okay. Some buyers are actually the most superstitious one actually are fearful because of it might mean it's back for Hong Sui. That's Feng Shui. Yes. Okay, fine. So it's a city fringe apartment. You can buy one to four bedrooms. Price is about half the price of Orchard Road. About 20% cheaper than my unit in Icon. So, very interesting investment. It's hot, it's cool, it's la vie. It's pretty expensive as well. 
It's about three minutes from Orchard Road. It's not built yet, but the best thing about this investment is you put 20% down and nothing until it's built. The government's recently stopped deferred payment schemes because they're trying to cool the market down. So they have to make progressive payments all the way through. So it does make for an interesting investment. Next, it was out to the island of Sentosa, known as Asia's favorite playground and home to a new integrated casino resort, theme park, and some of the priciest real estate in Asia. So where are we, Peter? Uh, this is Sentosa Cove, a uh, very exclusive uh, residential area in okay. the isle, uh, resort island of Sentosa. OK. Yeah. okay. We are, and we are meeting um, Chris, the queen of bungalows in Sentosa. You're the queen of bungalows? Yes, I am. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Uh, this is Tim. Nice Do to meet you. Do I have to sort of bow or something? <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. Hi. Hi. Nice to meet you. Fantastic. All right, let's have a look. Look at this. Beautiful. Well, you can see the lounge. Yeah. So what's the size of this? 9,000 square feet. Yes. All right, that's big. Yes, it is. And the built-up is almost one-to-one -one as well. So it's about 9,000 square feet as well. Okay. So it's a good, good built-up. And how many bedrooms has it got? Oh, we're talking about five plus one. So, yeah, it's relatively big for its wow. size. Yeah. Absolutely incredible. Now, talk me through it then. So, landed property in Sentosa, foreigners can actually buy it because the whole of Singapore, foreigners can only buy apartments, right? They yes. can't buy landed property. But here they can, right? Yes, that's right. But yes, that's it's right. expensive. It is very expensive. Okay. Um, currently, only mainland locals can buy into mainland land. Yeah. So foreigners, they can only buy into Sentosa. Okay, so just here, they can, foreigners so, can buy. Yes. So many foreigners owning these things? Oh, yes, about 60% right now. Really? Yeah, in the beginning, maybe from year 07, uh, lots of it are uh, owned by Singaporeans. Okay. But nowadays, a lot of uh, Chinese people are coming in, yes, Indonesians, okay. as well as uh, local foreigners are coming in, yes. So where are we? We're in the South Cove, and it's a largely uh, undeveloped um, cove of um, Sentosa. Okay. So I'd like you to meet uh, the owner and my friend, Dr. Go. Hey, good team. to meet you. Nice good to, to meet, meet you. you. Dr. Go, new boat, new house. Wow, yes, of course. I'm not going to get sick in Singapore, I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> so you just bought this recently? Yes, a couple of months back. And your this is investment, or are you going to live no, here? No, 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 it's, it's a lifestyle. I okay. need to live here and enjoy the life here. And you're going to still work, or are you giving it? Is this retirement? No, this is such that I can work harder. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. The life of the rich and famous in Sentosa. One day we'll be there. Yes, we will. <laughs> <laughs> so when they start the construction, when did the owner buy it? Right, uh, the owner bought it about nearly three years ago. Okay. And uh, she bought it for uh, nine million. Nine million? Yes. Okay, and what's it worth now? 30 million. Wow. <laughs> so is she going to live here or is she going to sell it? She's going to sell it, most probably, uh, and after her renovation. So she's going to do some finishing and um, do some feature walls. Well, look, I think the view is absolutely amazing, but for a property of that kind of money, you want the renovations to do a real job because I think the fit out is pretty average for a property of that kind of money. That's right. Now, I went in the bathroom, the master bathroom. I reckon I'd have been about nine when I could have fitted in that bath. <laughs> <laughs> so what have we learned? Singapore is super foreigner friendly from the moment you arrive to the point of buying your first property. It's easy to own, rent, mortgage and has low taxes, but it's not cheap. And you know what? It's not getting any cheaper. I've just bought my second investment property here. So for me, Singapore gets a big thumbs up. Next week on Buying Asia, I'm off to Japan to find out whether they're emerging from their long term economic slump in Tokyo and I'll be exploring two new hidden gems in Hakuba and Niseko. This is Tim Murphy signing off on Buying Asia, one brick at a time. So join me on the piste in Niseko to look at property investment from all sorts of different standpoints, from buying organic land and farming to buying a penthouse apartment right in the middle of Irafu village here.